I'm in our children's learning center for the youngest of our church family today with your weekly word. I want to share a little meditation with you upon uh, the gift of growing the faith at the end of this video. But first, I just want to remind you to check your parish life for all the various activities that are taking place in our church life together. First and foremost among them for this weekend is the importance of having all church members participate in our Zoom congregational meeting for the purpose of electing uh, officers as we prepare for uh, the turnover that happens annually of a third of our officers uh, that begins in the month of July. I want to thank all the folks that uh, are willing and have accepted the call as they've received a, uh, an inquiry from our, our congregational nominating committee. Uh, and I encourage all members to be in prayer for this important responsibility that will happen following worship at 11 o'clock. Uh, for those of you who participate in worship online, I hope that you're with us for the YouTube premiere of worship so that when you finish that, you can go directly at 11 o'clock to our meeting. If you plan to watch on demand later, then of course, make sure that you've scheduled in for this Zoom meeting at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Those of you who will be with me in the sanctuary, uh, we will um, project our Zoom companions onto the screen and you will have the opportunity to participate in the, uh, uh, the hybrid, virtual, and in-person congregational meeting in that way. I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, please register to participate in worship. There are some changes uh, coming for the month of May. Uh, you'll be able to participate a little bit more than just humming and stay tuned. I'll give you more details about that next week. Um, and, uh, you know, if you don't manage to register online by the Saturday for a faster entry, you still will be able to come in person. You'll just have to answer some questions before proceeding as we want to continue to be safe with our in-person offering. Uh, I encourage you to think about participating in our audiovisual team. We are recruiting volunteers for the video booth in the sanctuary, the new video equipment in the chapel, and the audio board in the sanctuary, and the audio board in the chapel. Uh, we will begin uh, having streamed worship. Our working plan is for the month of June, uh, so that instead of the format you've been seeing, it'll be a little different. If you participate online, you'll see what's happening in person, and that will be what we'll be streaming uh, for you. Um, so please call into the church office. You don't have to have prior experience for that or send uh, an email to office at boxp.net. We're so glad so many of you have been thinking about joining the life of our church. We've already received a number of new members in the course of our pandemic time of being church. And so send in your notice if you'd like to participate in our inquirers class to learn more about what it means to carry the faith as a Presbyterian in Lake County with us. Now, I want to uh, uh, share some news with you about... Uh, a member of our church who wants to open up more time in her life for other pursuits. And so uh, you'll get the full conversation in uh, worship, but I'd like to share just a little bit of a conversation I've just had with Carol Boyce. Carol, why don't you bring us into the loop on what you're thinking? Thanks, Brian. Yes, my big news is that after three very rewarding years at the church, I'm going to retire from my job the end of May. I've enjoyed meeting and working with all of you and being a part of the children's lives. I'm grateful for the opportunities this position has allowed me. The good news is I hope to continue our journey together as I still plan to be around and involved with children and families and education programs at the church. I've chosen to leave in May because I want to do some traveling and visit some families over the summer that I haven't seen in a long time. I have an almost two-year-old grandson I want to spend more time with, 
And I've recently adopted two puppies, a golden retriever and a collie who are taking up a lot of my time. Yeah. As I said, you'll be able to get more of this conversation in worship. Um, and I want to just reiterate our great gratitude for Carol. Of course, that means that it's a time of change for us. Uh, but the Faith Formation Ministry has already set up an Intergen Faith Formation Vision Team that has begun their work to envision how we might uh, use this occasion to adjust and adapt our ministry uh, with children and families under the leadership of Reverend Ryan Wallace for the fall season and moving forward. You may already know that uh, traditional vacation Bible school still in this uncertain time of pandemic uh, with variants coming and so forth. We've set that aside in favor of some wonderful intergenerational events that will happen over the summer. I encourage you to look for those activities. Uh, but uh, Reverend Ryan Wallace is uh, expecting uh, with Amanda, who is <laughs> preparing to labor her way to a third child in the Wallace family. He'll be taking some weeks of family leave and he'll come back with us in June and participate in the work of this uh, vision team that's already underway. So I'm thinking about uh, how we share the faith with the next generation. And uh, you'll read in my Parish Life Meditation uh, that I've drawn from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, where he references someone he calls his child in the faith, Timothy. Uh, and the way in which Timothy passes on the teaching from uh, what everyone had seen and known and learned in Paul through Timothy and onward for future generations. And what's at the core of that teaching? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Paul lays out the challenge in Philippians that we are to have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that we would have his humble servant attitude in the course of life. He challenges the church to be the body of Christ and to offer that as a gift of love for the world, what he calls the more excellent way. So Paul speaks to issues of his day always applying the core of the Christian gospel, Jesus Christ, the one who was dead, but who is risen with life for all. Now we're in the time of great change. I mean, probably not since the Reformation era have we experienced such dramatic change as we are enduring at this time. Of course, you'll remember, you know, in the Reformation, uh, the sociological phenomenon of the printing press allowed the Bible to become something that uh, everyone with learning could acquire. And now we're undergoing this digital revolution and relationships are being built and information is being acquired in ways that we've never known before. I, I want to suggest that uh, we now consume information from such a broad variety of sources, that there is some danger for our spirit, our soul. I was in Princeton uh, over a year ago, pre-pandemic, hearing a woman who had been the editor-in-chief for Time magazine lay at the feet of media companies uh, across the sort of political, socio-political uh, spectrum Blame for taking, if it bleeds, it leads to an extreme. In other words, seeking polarization because it gave them uh, financial benefit. We need to be wise about these things and the manner in which it impacts our hearts in these greatly challenging times. And we need to think about how it is that we learn from people of faith who pass down the core of the gospel and then apply that gospel to different circumstances that every age sets up before us. Our role is to be teachers of the faith, sisters and brothers, parents, children, with an attitude that seeks ever to return to that, that essence of grace 
that we found in Christ Jesus. His ability to convict us of our need to change our hearts and our willingness to receive God's great love and let it water our souls with an open spirit of compassion. Well, there's just a few thoughts for you. You can read some more about my thoughts uh, in Parish Life Meditation. And I invite you to join with me now in a period of prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Carol Boyce. And we ask blessings upon her as she enters into this time of retirement. May she find some joy and flourishing as she discovers new avenues for discovery for herself and her family. And oh God, grant that uh, you would bless her continued participation in our life and volunteer efforts. We pray, oh God, for the Intergen Faith Formation Vision Team and ask that you lay your hand of blessing upon them, that you would fill them with the ability to perceive some new future for our ministry with children and families, and that they would articulate it faithfully and effectively in partnership with the session and for the congregation, that together we might raise up a new generation of faith who demonstrate the way of life, the resurrection life that we've known in Christ Jesus. These are such changing and challenging times, O oh God. We continue to pray for frontline workers in the midst of the COVID crisis. We pray for our public safety officers, for the way in which there are so many good people who put their lives on the line and are struggling to be faithful in their ethics and their attitudes. We pray for those who grieve. We pray, O oh God, that you would come alongside those who feel that they have not received justice at the hands of the system that benefits so many and yet neglects so many others in the course of being in this land. Grant, O oh God, that we would open our eyes to the full breadth and spectrum of Christian faith. Build within us a certain piety of spirit to seek to live faithful and honest and sincere lives lives of service and compassion for others, and keep our minds open to the possibilities of our participation with others in our congregation and for our community in pathways that will open up a brighter, beloved community and future for us all. O oh God, strengthen and guide us day by day according to your grace, and lift us into the company of saints through our life of prayer, and through the witness that we bear to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. There is your weekly word. I encourage you to enjoy the beauty of the outdoors. Don't forget to worship. Keep God at the center of your life. We'll see you in church, whether in virtual or in person, at the congregational meeting. Blessings.